Good morning. Let's talk trash. On average, Americans produce over four pounds of trash every day. That's 264,000 tons across the United States, most of it going to landfills. Wouldn't it be great if instead of burying that trash, we could magically transform it into something useful? Actually, that's not magic. That's waste to energy. Welcome to this final briefing of the Waste to Energy Technology Act of 2011. My name is Cindy Hollenberg, and I'll present the final briefing for the Waste to Energy team for the summer and fall semesters. Special thanks to our very capable and helpful advisor, Professor Irene Nielsen, our managers, Mia and Andrew, my final briefing team, Sua and Holly, and all of the Waste to Energy team. This morning, we'll be looking at what are the problems addressed by the Waste to Energy Technology Act? Also, how does the solution actually address those problems? Then we'll be looking at what the program looks like, and finally, we'll put it all into context as we look at the projected outcome. The Waste to Energy Technology Act seeks to address two main environmental problems, landfilling and fossil fuel use. As waste decomposes, it produces methane, a greenhouse gas 21 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. This contributes to global warming. In addition, volatile compounds can escape into the air, creating air emissions hazards. And if water is allowed to reach the decomposing waste, it can run off as a toxic substance called leachate, poisoning our water systems. For these and other reasons, siting is often an issue when we're talking about landfilling, especially in densely populated areas. Even though safeguards are in place, sometimes these systems fail, failing to protect the environment. Let's face it, nobody wants a landfill in their backyard. And fossil fuels, we have a limited supply of them. And so extraction is becoming increasingly more costly and dangerous. And by that extraction, we're actually displacing it, taking it out of the Earth's crust and putting it into the atmosphere. Again, creating, causing global problems with global warming. The Waste to Energy Technology Act prioritizes several issues which address these concerns. First and foremost, reducing greenhouse gas emissions over the life cycle of the facility. Also, having lowered risks to human health and the environment by taking care of some of those emissions. Also, producing energy from a source that is quite abundant and also focusing on lowering the cost. Inherent in this solution is the idea that waste is really just wasted resources. So the first thing that Waste to Energy does as an integrated waste management system is take off the, the part of the waste stream that can be recycled and actually reuse and recycle them. But what's left over actually has energy value. You see, in every molecule, there's stored chemical energy in the bonds between the atoms. When we break those bonds, we release the energy. The trick then is simply to capture that energy, and that's what waste to energy does by two main processes, anaerobic digestion by microbes and also thermal conversion, the application of heat. Anaerobic digestion takes food scraps, sewage sludge, and yard waste and places them in a digester with microbes where they break down the material naturally in the absence of oxygen. The technology then controls the environment and captures those gases, creating a biofuel that has the electricity generating capacity of about 62 kilowatt hours per ton of waste processed. The solid that's left over, called digestate, can be further processed to produce a compost. Thermal conversion uses heat instead of microbes to break down the waste. And in the order of increasing conversion efficiency, I'll present four main technologies. First, the current technology, combustion, which is typical burning, but in con a controlled environment. Second, we have pyrolysis, which is application of a higher heat in the absence of oxygen, so there's no burning. Above that, we have gasification, which is even higher heat, so there's a more thorough breakdown of the waste material. Finally, we have plasma art gasification, which uses extreme heat that actually ionizes gases, much like lightning ionizes the gases in the atmosphere. 
Thermal conversion then produces a synthesis gas called syngas, which is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. It has the thermal ca capacity very similar to natural gas. Thermal conversion also produces direct heat and it produces solids which can be further processed, which can be used for construction or which must be manned landfilled, depending on the technology used and also the waste stream that goes in. You can see the difference. The higher the technology, the higher the conversion efficiency. The orange bars represent the net electricity produced per ton of solid waste. Starting with 544 kilowatt hours per ton with combustion to a high of 816 kilowatt hours per ton with, with plasma arc gasification. The blue line represents the volume of waste reduction in percentages, 90% at the lower end, 99% at the higher end. Clearly, we need to look at and, and develop higher technologies. The Waste Energy Technology Act authorizes $1 billion to be allocated as a 30% federal tax investment credit. This is to stimulate investment by lowering startup costs for waste to energy facilities. At the same time, it promotes recycling while protecting human health and the environment. The Internal Revenue Service and the in Environmental Protection Agency are tasked with jointly implementing, the, implementing this bill. The EPA will be mainly in charge of application review, having senior scientists review the plans for maximization of recycling, for reductions in life cycle greenhouse gases and for emissions technology based on the, ther the thermal technology involved. Also they will look at documentation review once applicants get their documentation in. All of this information they report to the IRS. The IRS is responsible for the allocation, which is a legal contract drawn up based on the projected cost of their plan. Also, they will draw up official documentation, the certification, which gives the, the final official tax credit to the applicant based on actual costs. At the end, the Secretary of the Treasury must report to Congress how and where the money was spent. The program overall will run approximately four years, six months for preparation, guidance creation, and publication followed by two rounds of application acceptance, application review, and allocation. Applicants then have one year to submit their documentation, and certification follows that, that, document, cert certification, that document submission. Program assessment happens all the time, yet at the end, it's intense as they must report to Congress. Overall, the program implementation cost will be $1.462 million, the Environmental Protection Agency takes 55% of that for their role in creating the guidelines, application review, and documentation review. The Internal Revenue Service will take 31% for their role in the allocation and certification. Contractors will be hired as part of the application review process to assess financial viability, and they will also do site verification. Waste to energy startup is expensive. $1 billion will likely buy us an average daily waste processing capacity of about 17,000 tons of dry waste. That's 3% of what's produced in the United States. And yet, this doesn't take into account the fact that the bill clearly states that we must maximize recycling. An integrated waste management system would recycle on site, taking recyclable material out of the waste stream. At this, at this 75% recycling rate, a rate that is deemed feasible by waste to energy facilities, we could increase the amount of waste taken out of the stream to t over 29,000 dry tons. What does that mean? By recycling on site, we're now saving over 6,500 eight yard dumpsters or 2,300 garbage trucks the size used in New York City from going to landfills every day. And not only that, by processing this amount of waste, we can generate over 9 million kilowatt hours worth of electricity. That's enough to power 272,000 homes, saving 4,500 tons of coal from being burned. At the same time, we're keeping 15,000 tons of carbon dioxide equivalents 
from going into our atmosphere from the Earth's crust. This one solution, this one solution solves two problems at once, landfilling and coal burning. And waste to energy as it develops and grows can only become more affordable. As landfilling and coal burning continue, resources are limited, so it can only become more costly economically, environmentally, and politically. As an integrated waste management solution, waste to energy is an emerging solution to local as well as global environmental problems. It's one step closer to sustainability. Thank you very much. And I will now take your questions. So the mechanism of funding for this bill is the billion dollar investment tax credit. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just wondering what kind of entities you expect will be building these waste energy facilities? Because I know that a, a problem with other, renew uh, with say renewable investment tax credits is that the companies that are actually um, building the, um, the projects don't make money in their first say 10 years. And so they can't actually <laughs> use the tax credit because they don't have any income that's taxable. Um, so I was just wondering what kind of entities you guys expect will be taking advantage of this program and building these projects, and will they actually be able to take advantage of those tax benefits? One of the things that's happening is waste to energy is, um, is dominated really by one particular energy company right now, and that's Covanta. And um, they are making money, and they can take advantage of the tax credit. Um, and again, I'm not an accountant, so I don't know exactly how they keep their books. But uh, yeah, we do expect that they can take advantage. And certainly, it would be by companies that would expect to make a profit. Hi. Hi. Um, regarding the leachate comment and mm -hmm. the information regarding the landfill, Mm -hmm. Does this bill encompass at all any kind of remediation for the land once the uh, garbage has been sort of put to use for the profit? Okay, uh, the bill itself does not actually address uh, remediation. What it does is it talks about incentivizing a different, uh, it, an alternative to landfilling so that now we're no longer taking our as much waste anyway and putting it into landfills. So we're reducing that problem, but no, it doesn't actually address remediation at current landfills. Hello. Um, so I was wondering, you mentioned there were different levels of heating up the waste in the facilities. Um, which one is the most used now? And also, is there a difference in afford affordability for each one? Absolutely. Currently, um, the technology that's used is combustion. In fact, it's the only one uh, in use in this country. Uh, the higher technologies, there, there is some being used in Japan and in Europe. It is very costly. The higher the technology, the higher the cost. And also, um, the Covanta has told us that it's very difficult to scale up, especially plasma arc gasification. And so what they're finding is that plasma arc gasification can often be used for things like taking waste uh, that would be toxic and putting it in the landfills. If you take that, you can vitrify it, and which, is, which is mainly melting it to a glassy-like substance. You actually encapsulate the toxins within that glass, and then it no, no longer has a leaching problem. One more question from Matthew. Professor Palmer. Professor Palmer. <laughs> I imagine these plants are quite expensive. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how far a billion dollars goes. Is this a, a baby step, or is this, this a, is a, a serious step. investment? This is a baby step. Uh, like I said, um, what a billion dollars can do as a 30% tax credit is only buy us an approximate daily uh, waste processing capacity of about 17,000 tons. So that's only 3% of the waste. And so what we're hoping is that as it becomes more affordable, they will become more like pro pilot projects and as the technology increases and grows, it will become more affordable so that we can look at a larger scale um, processing. Thank you very much. Thank you.